you are at Lake Rant where I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about, you can get one of these by being one of those. This one is for, oh my god, I didn't even have it open. Kerbin, who says, reflect on your old Kashern Sins review. Uh, so this is going to take some explaining. On my anime list, which is a huge website that uh, is basically a social media platform where you have a public profile that also has a list of all the anime that you've seen, how many episodes you've seen, the status of whether you consider yourself to have put it on hold or to have dropped it or completed it. You can score the shows, make favorite lists. It's a great way, honestly, for somebody like me, who you know is a famous anime person, to just in one fell swoop explain to people, like, here's everything I've seen, here's how I feel about it, here's what my favorites are, you have a good sense of who I am as an anime critic now, you know, like, you you know what my tastes are, your expectations should be set in place, and, uh, you know, uh, there's lots of competitors to Mal, but just the bottom line is that Mal has the best database, they just have the best out of any of the ones that do this, um, I mean, Anime News Network has a better database, but they have shit social media functions. I would not want to send somebody to my ANN page. I don't know why they haven't updated this. They could have, uh, you know, used the fact that they've been around forever to, to make Mal irrelevant by just doing what they do better. But I guess that's what happens when you are a dinosaur website. So, anyway, you know, I use Mal every single day uh, to update what I'm fucking watching meticulously. So I've always you know, been on the site, and if you go to any show's page, there's tons of information about the show, including uh, user reviews, which come up pretty pretty early on. You know, you got like a synopsis, uh, links to the episodes, you got the characters and voice actors, the staff list, opening and ending theme. That's all the basic information that's not, you know, the stuff on the sidebar. And then, you know, it goes into user reviews, forum discussions, recommendations of other shows that are similar, right? So, the reviews section will, on the front page, have, like, you know, just two or three reviews. You can click read more. It only shows you the first couple paragraphs. But, like, generally, if a really well-written review gets onto the site that generally represents the way that people who, in, you know, like the show feel about the show... Um, it's most likely going to get to the top of that list and stay there forever. Because uh, most of the Mal reviews are not well written. They're not written by professional reviewers. The point of them is to be user reviews. You know, uh, if somebody wanted to get paid to write a review, they would go to a different website. This is only for people who are not getting paid, who are just doing it for the glory of having written the most helpful review. Because that's the way the voting goes. It's that you can vote whether a review was helpful. It used to be that it was helpful or not helpful. Um, so it's an upvote, downvote system. Now you only get to vote on if it's helpful or not. So it's just whoever gets the most helpful reviews, I guess, stays at the top. Fair enough. Uh, but, like, again... If you write a comprehensive, well-written review, people are usually looking for something like that because they want to know exactly what they're getting themselves into when they watch this show, I guess. Or they want it to perfectly reflect, you know, how they felt about the show uh, to explain their feelings, which is more of what you get on, like, the YouTube side of reviewing. People are usually more looking for affirmation of their own feelings or opinions or deeper thoughts to take away from the show, you know, like a deeper realization that they can get out of having watched it, uh, internalize, you know, a more specific message from having watched it, which is the benefit of, like, analysis. But, like, I've always appreciated consumer reviews that are, they exist to, you know, not to think more deeply about the story, but just to tell you whether or not you should watch it. Like, I I think that doing consumer reviews should be more like a recommendation than anything else. It's not about uh, deciding exactly how good the show is. It's about deciding how good it will be for the people who will enjoy it. And if you won't enjoy it, we need to establish, like, what it is so you know. Like, if I give this show a 10, but, you know, there's a chance you're not going to like it at all, 
I just have to establish why I'm giving it a 10 very specifically, you know? And uh, I'm a big fan of reviewers like Roger Ebert, who I think he analyzes the films in his mind in an extensive amount of detail, plucks the most interesting details from that that he can weave a short narrative about, and presents a punchy little review that gives you a pretty good sense of what the movie is and whether or not you're going to like it and exactly what key moments or, you know, interesting performances or aspects of the directing were what made him feel the way he felt, you know? But, like, you don't have to comment on every single thing if some of it wasn't that interesting or important. That's what I'm going to be criticizing about this review because the way I wrote this Kishernson's review is just, uh, it was in 20 fucking, when did I post this? 2009, March 27th, 2009. Um, throughout 2008 and 2009 was a period where I was really trying to improve my craft as a reviewer. And I wrote a bunch of reviews that I posted up on Mal. And a lot of them were not voted as helpful because I was very negative about shows that other people liked or I wrote them in, in odd ways. Like uh, my Neo Ranga review was very positive about Neo Ranga, but... I opened it up in like a, a, a weirdly pretentious kind of way that just sounded like a douchey review. And so I think people, uh, you know, downloaded it on that basis, regardless of how in-depth I was going to go about it, you know, later on. Um, I think that, you know, having a strong intro, getting people hooked, not turning people away with the score. Like I did an Escaflone review one time where I gave it a six. Not a lot of people were happy about it just because people like that show more than I do, you know, and... Uh, you know, maybe they didn't like my reasoning or whatever, but I, the goal of my review is not to reflect the most massive opinion. It is to reflect exactly how I felt and then to explain how I felt to you so that you know whether or not you're going to feel the same, you know, or, uh, you know, maybe you will even, from reading my review, think, well, I don't care about these problems you had, you know, something like that. But this Schoenstein's review, the reason that it's still up on Mal, because I hid most of my reviews, I just thought these aren't really indicative of my current opinions, and because I am using my Mal as a social media platform to, you know, tie into my YouTube presence, I mean, I have, like, a fucking an absurd amount of friends on here. How many friends do I have? I have 6,463 friends on Mal. So, like... I want them to see my current opinions on these shows. However, I left up the ones that had been voted as extremely helpful. So my Kishore and Sins review is the first review that you're going to see on the page. It's been voted 809 people find it helpful. Um, it's a glowing review, and uh, it's long as shit. And it's been the top review of Kishore and Sins pretty much since the show fucking first came out. Because, again, if your review is helpful and it's well-written... And it comes out in any kind of timely fashion, it'll probably stay there for the rest of time. Nobody's coming back to check back through the reviews of these shows. They're going to, you know, check the first one they see because they haven't seen the show yet. Once they've seen the show, they don't need your review anymore. That's the point of consumer reviews. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to read some of it. We'll look into it. Kasher and Sins is not for everyone. The show pretty much moves at one pace, and that pace is slow. There is a lot of silence, introspection, and philosophical dialogue. Ordinarily, this would make one assume the show is pretentious, especially since it has a lot of similarities to techno lies. Now see, this is, I don't like this. I don't like that I'm throwing techno lies under the bus as pretentious. Uh, I don't really feel that way about techno lies today. I doubt I had even, I mean, I, I think I'd seen the whole show by then, but um, I probably just didn't understand it that well. Even if I had said Ergo Proxy, I would have felt better about it at this, you know, looking back on it today. But uh, there was just no reason to say that. It could have just been some would assume the show is pretentious, which is, I, I think, a more, you know, young minded thing to do in the first place, as clearly I was here. Um, but it really isn't. Kishern has a very simple plot, very simple dialogue, and is easy to understand, so people looking for a mind blower won't find it here. The plot and messages of Kishern Sins are much more along the lines of Kino's journey or Mushishi. However, just like action fans will be turned off by the slow pace, fans of more quiet contemplative anime might be turned off by the fact that there is at least one fight scene per episode and they can at times be lengthy. So the niche here is kind of small, requiring that you like a good variety of styles. 
I happen to fall into that niche. So, you know, aside from that weird aside, I love the intro. I love this idea that I'm saying, look, I'm giving this a 10 out of 10 while telling you that it's not for everyone. This is only for people who like combinations of action-packed scenes and slowed down uh, moments, you know. So the way I was doing this is that I would break down these categories because on Mal, you are traditionally meant to write your reviews following the categories of story, animation, sound, character, and enjoyment, and then giving them an overall score. This is a, a weird, asinine, inane, bizarre system, but these categories could be broken down to some extent, and that's what I tried to do in my reviews. So I would start with sound, and I would go into each different aspect of sound. So the voice acting, the music, the uh, you know sound effects, like each one of those, I'm gonna look at that, see how they did, and come to a conclusion about it. You know, so sound gets a ten in this show, animation gets a ten, story gets a nine, uh, character gets a nine, and enjoyment gets a ten. That's the way that this is structured. I obviously would not bother with any of this shit if I was gonna write a review today. Um, and overall, this review, I'm not going to read any more of it because it's fucking long. Like, there are just about sound. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paragraphs about sound in this review. And a lot of it is me name dropping everybody who did everything and then listing like four things else that you might know that person for, for comparison. Because... I find all that kind of information very interesting. I want to know the connections between these people, but I think that really belongs in a different video, you know, like uh, a different post. Like you can have your review and then you can have uh, something that goes in depth about these aspects. Like I don't need the person reading the review to have all the information about these people in this show. I mean, it's possible that me saying like, "Oh, the soundtrack is by Kaoru Wada. He did Princess Tutu, Tekken Man Blade, and Two Heart," might entice you more to watch the show. But like, I I think that if it really was going to, you'd probably know who the fucking person is. You know, like. Uh, maybe you don't, maybe hearing one of the names of those shows will make you go, oh, that guy, you know, but like, I don't think that's going to be a selling point. I, I think I can sell the show without even bringing up, you probably sound at all, you know, if we're being honest. I love the soundtrack of this show, but like, I go on to talk about like a bunch of the voice actors and who all they voice, and I don't really have much meaningful to say about their performances or how much they contribute to the show. It's just like... I felt like I needed to go in depth on every single thing, and I try to avoid that now. I try to just talk about whatever is interesting, um, because again, we're not writing a book about this show. We're writing a review, a, a consumer review, meant to be read by somebody who hasn't seen it to entice them to watch it. They don't need to know the minute details of every aspect of its quality. They just need to know should I fucking watch it or not, you know. So, like, yeah, I think the video is, uh, the, the, the review is overboard. It's, like, too in-depth for what it is. Not all this information was necessary. It, it's not necessary for a, a recommendation review to also be, like, a conclusive statement on the quality of the piece. And a conclusive statement on the quality of the piece is not that interesting anyways if you're not going to really analyze every aspect you talk about in-depth and really explain why it deserves First of all, breaking it into categories, asinine, giving each category its own score, extra asinine, you know, so, yeah, uh, obviously I wouldn't structure a review like this today, but I still think it's fine, you know, conveys the information. Um, I think that opening paragraph, honestly, is enough. <laughs> you just read that and you're done. Probably that's what a lot of people did.